Welcome back to Guillotines and Guitars at the Hotsville, South Carolina studios. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> My name is Chris Six. That's Trey Davis over there. This is Scott Barfield, and this is Carol Ganey. Back and in the studio. Finally back joining us again is Carol. <laughs> Ca- Canadian Carol. Canadian Carol. Close. Yeah. Did you did you get across the border okay? Everything went right okay? It, it was a little busy, but I got across. Good, good. All right. We had a heck of a show before. We talked about uh, guitars. We talked about live streaming music. Talked about a bunch of things. Go on there and check us out on that. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Um, a lot of good stuff on there. And now we're moving on to Guillotines. Mothman. 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 Really interesting stuff we're going to be talking about. So make sure you stay tuned, listen, and be educated. I love this. I can see the wheels <laughs> turning in your head. You're like, how can I how how can I kill this time? What can I say to make the time go fast? It's killing. I tell you what, I know we've got a few seconds. If it was me, not that I'm not, if it was me, I would say I just want to thank our sponsors because without our sponsors, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing. And our sponsors are so important. Our sponsors are local here to Hartsville, South Carolina. So a lot of people that watch this show don't know who we're talking about. But I'll tell you, if you ever make your way down to Hartsville, South Carolina, J. Michael's Bar and Grill, some of the best food ever. You got. Uh, we have some great food sponsors, as you could probably tell by some of us. Chris, we have some of the best <laughs> food sponsors. It's J. Michael's. <laughs> J. Michael's Bar and Grill, <laughs> Wings and Ale, Burgers on Wheels, and then you got Shane's Tire. Uh, Chris has a spare tire, but we got Sher- Shane's Tire. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got some excellent sponsors, and we want to thank them all for helping us out. I'm going to pull a smaller on there in a little while. Just give me about a month or two. I have a smaller tire. Run that gotcha. donut. That's you. He's doing the. Uh, cri- the he's still doing the, the beer diets, so and we're good. <laughs> but, yes, thank you to our sponsors. We can't do nothing without you. That's right. And so we're going to christen this episode, which is our guillotines, talking about the Mothman. What are we going to christen it with? I tell you what, nothing better. To, so the Mothman is following our Lizard Man show we just did. On our Lizard Man show, we did from Twisted Shots, the Rattlesnake. And this one was a big one. We all like this one. <laughs> Go ahead, do it again. I'm a snake. <laughs> I'm a snake. <laughs> but we all really liked this one on the last show. But we do it again. So this is uh, from Twisted Shots, the rattlesnake. It's going to bite you. <laughs> Y'all thought something was behind you, didn't you? Then you felt like it was near. I was hoping nothing was behind me. I know. Oh, I yeah. was too. I was like, what, what is that? <laughs> felt close to you, didn't it? Oh, look at this right here. This is a nice color. I like the color. Twisted is awesome. Twisted's, man, they got some good stuff. Yeah, for our radio listeners, uh, this the Twisted Shots have a divider in the middle of them that has two different liquids, one on, on each side, and you take it down the middle. Scott, I'm, I'm going to explain to you how this works. <laughs> <laughs> you, you drink yeah. it down the middle so that you get both of them at the same time, and there's the, the divider is actually like kind of it's twisted, so it does a little swirl. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it's called a wham bam, really. It, you know, the, all, all you know, the I mean. wham will hit you first and bam. <laughs> <laughs> and then then but you'll, it, you'll snake. Yeah. And then <laughs> if you don't like it, then it's kind of like. Puck to it. But, <laughs> but twist is always good to us. And we appreciate them. Cheers. Cheers. That song was going to have some <sighs> booze in it. Oh, yes, it did, John Bird. <laughs> and that one is. <laughs> that's like. <laughs> yeah, it's got a little bite to it. <laughs> that, that one is like a. Dang. Oh my <laughs> goodness, Carol! Come on, just uh, you've really been in Carol for. Yeah, man, I'm in Canada for. You've been in Carol. That's why I said that. <laughs> you've been, been in working. Canada. <laughs> Carol still sipping on. Come on, Carol. If you don't like <laughs> it, it, it's still in there. If you don't like it, just go. Hot to it. There you go. All right, get rid Moth of Moth Man. Let's dove on into this. <laughs> Delve. 1966. We're going to dove. We're going to delve. 66 or 67. Delve or dove? started, the first one was in 66. 66, 66 yeah. yes. 1966, a couple of teenagers driving down the road near a um, demilitarized gun making place. Or, or I don't think, <laughs> that's how, don't think that's how it went. It was close, but. Oh, uh, you're so close. Yeah, how, many, how many teenagers were there? 
There were four. Yeah, there were four. Okay, you said a couple of teenagers. Yeah. The phone a friend. (laughs) So there were two couples. Yeah. So I think that's what he meant. Yes. So I just want to make sure our listeners understand, and then they go they follow what was happening right now. And they they were so driving down close to the TNT area. Yep. Which was um, a a military um, where they they used to bullets ammunition. They built munitions. They call it TNT. Yeah. There right. they did. Right. They had bunkers and all. So they were driving down the road. So what happened? Go ahead and tell me. If you don't, yeah. I'm going to. Yeah, go ahead. All right, I'm going to tell you right now. The names were Roger and Linda Scarberry. I didn't go that And far. Steve and Mary Millette. They're, they're driving <laughs> together on State Route 82 or State Route 62 near the abandoned National Guard Armory building. So I, I got don't nothing. Know, on, he had, don't know if you're were right about that part details. or not. But so they're driving down the road. Right. This is this is that night. All of a sudden, ahead of them, they see, standing there in the road, a figure that looks like a man. They don't see the, the wings quite yet, but they see a figure there. The lights shine on the eyes, like your little reflectors that you see on the side of the road. Like some people put them on their, their driveways like to keep you from running into the ditch or something like that. Beside the, beside, yeah, beside the driveway. So the lights reflect on these eyes that turn a bright red. And when they do, this figure is standing there looking, you know, and they're like, oh, what is that? They, the guys, the, the one that's driving, slams on brakes, turns around, and this road that they're on, I've seen this road, it's a straight road. People used to drag race, and I think that's what they were actually doing. They were going out there to, to drag race. And uh, it's a long, straight, flat road. He turns around, it's a 57 Chevy, I think, a 56 or 57 Chevy, and guns it. 100 miles an hour. They look behind him. This figure now is following them, and when it starts off, it starts to run, and it's kind of clunky. It's not really like just, you know, like a superhero who just starts running perfect. They're, what they all described was something that was kind of clumsy. Gallop. Something that was, yeah, maybe something that was kind of clumsy at running. But then it got up in the air. These wings come out that look like they were about 12 feet across. And now all of a sudden it's catching them. Wasn't catching them when it was running. But once the wings came out, now it's catching them. Now later they said um, that when, so they, they're heading back towards town. It finally left them. But it had got to the car and touched the top of the car and scratched the roof of that car. 1966. I'd been throwing passengers out the <laughs> door. <laughs> Take him! Take her! <laughs> but this is so. I, 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 but but it's so similar to the lizard man story <laughs> in a way that is. this thing is it it just is. comes comes at you and then attacks the, the, the car. The way you just told that that whole scene. You felt like I, you were there, I, right? I, yeah, I, did. I, I really I did. did. You I, did I really a good did. job. I, I was because like, my anxiety started to hit me. <laughs> my, my heart started rushing. I was like, I was like What's going to happen? Yeah. What's going to happen? And then you stopped. And you were like, You pointed to Chris and you were like, That's what happened. And then I was like, <laughs> It's like I, a cliffhanger, like a you. big cliffhanger. Yeah, what, what else? And so, now I'm looking at Chris to tell me. <laughs> and I know I'm not getting arrested. <laughs> well, my mind is blown because I, I, I did more. my well, I did my due diligence of research, but I didn't go as far as names and he, what he kind of probably, car they was driving. He and probably looked at kind of due diligence today <laughs> to find out what that meant, yeah. so he could Just use not. it in the sentence. Right. Well, like, you know. So going back to that, so this <laughs> happened. Uh, and I actually wrote half the 60, date down. 65, 66. It was November 15th, 1966. The day before, uh, somebody's pet, German Shepherd, went missing. They said that this dog ran into the woods after two red lights that he saw, that the owners Little saw. Little helicopters. That's what the man Is said. Is that what it said? Yeah. Yep. But they saw two red lights in the woods. But German Shepherd, no noise. German Shepherd goes after these two lights. When they go out there to find it, and I guess this is the next day when they finally go out. I don't know if they went out there and, and flashlights. I don't know that part. But when they went out there to find their dog, because the dog was just completely gone, like no sounds or anything, they go back out and they see the footprints of the dog. They don't see footprints of a creature, a person, or dog, another animal or anything. Else? Just they just see the German Shepherd's footprints in a circle, like it was running around something, and then nothing else. Gone. So, yeah. the, so the thought is because the next day this thing you know, was something – People said they saw something, um, and because it was so close to it, it was the same area. Day after, they just assumed maybe this is what again had two red eyes. The two red lights is what they saw. They didn't say eyes; they just said lights. 
And now there's these two red lights. The dog goes in there. The dog goes missing. The next day, there's two red lights people see in a row. They just happen to see also a silhouette of a body standing there, a six or seven foot tall is what they said. And then when all of a sudden these wings come out. So there's there's two instances, you know, back to back in the same place. So that's that's pretty spooky. Well, yeah, it is. But also the the, the guy who, who lost his dog, um, you know, he was on record. He actually was – he went to the police department – and gave a statement, and you know, I heard a video where him talking about, you know, I did too. Where, I heard where, that same video where he he saw, and he said it was like two lights flashing, two two red lights. He and, said it looks like a helicopter, but no noise. Yeah, no 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 noise at all. And he said his dog took off, and he said I, I think they had like a search party for his dog the next day. That's what it was, yeah. Yeah, because they, 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 they went the looking for the dog. Yeah, because the dog never came back, and. This he said it was you know his dog that stayed on the porch and never went anywhere you know I mean or he always come back to the house never came back and the next day they formed a search party because they, it, it was so unusual did for they the look dog around not to not to come back yeah did they look around their uh, the street lights and lamps and stuff I've seen moths always around those things yeah <laughs> this guy. <laughs> He's gonna be that guy but, tonight. So anyway, <laughs> he, you know, they they had this search party for a he dog. Comes out at night, <laughs> and they, they they couldn't find the dog. The dog disappeared. You know, never to be found again. So after that, many more sightings of the of the Mothman, and um, so they had the um, what was it, the Silver Key Bridge or the? Oh yeah, that was. And that was the one of the last times they saw it, right? Yeah, it yeah. was like right before well, they they uh, an appearance. Go ahead, I'll, I'll let you tell the story. Yeah, so they after the dog stuff, you know, incident, they had what, many more did, people what, say they they saw him perched up on the uh, abandoned uh, mill, and they saw him. Uh, in all the kind woods. Of, let's let's go to um the the bridge you're talking about. It was a year later after the first sightings. Yeah, so so, so the first sightings were in. Um, 66. 66. This is 67. So you're talking about the Silver, they claim silver Bridge. The, and, uh, it was a night before they saw a sighting of the Mothman <coughs> swooshing down on the bridge. I think perching I think was, on the bridge. There were several people who saw it. Yep, perching on the bridge and, you know, just doing passes. So the next, what was it, the next day? Was it the next day? I forgot. It was very I, I, soon after they they had the sightings of the Mothman at the uh, Silver Key Bridge that it collapsed and killed forty one people. Yeah. If I ain't mistaken, yeah, I think, I think so. Something like 40, forty or forty one people. Wait, yeah. no, uh, yeah, I was, I'm sorry, I was looking at something else, but yeah, about forty people. About forty, including the mayor's daughter, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. If I'm not mistaken, I think the, it, the mayor's parents. I think parents wasn't parents. I, I think it was his parents. Okay, well. Then after that, he becomes like a what prophecy? People start okay. Anything every time this Mothman shows up, something, something bad. bad happens. You know. Um, I'm fast forwarding a little bit, but they made a movie. You know, Mothman prophecies. Was that Richard Gere? I think it, it was in that. It, it was. Yep, Richard Gere. And I have yet to see them. I I still haven't. Seen I remember them. I remember pictures or, or uh, <clears throat> clips of it. I don't think I ever saw it. I, I really don't remember se- seeing that. So yeah. So um, then all that came about, and now they they have a Mothman Day. Oh yeah, they've got a giant statue in the in the center oh, of town yeah. too, right? Stainless steel statue. Every, yeah. Everybody goes and takes it, has a picture with it. Yeah. I mean, you have you have mayors from other. Cities and other states yeah. who come and get their picture taken with the Mothman statue. Do you know when and, that was put up? Nope. I think it was in the two thousands. I, I, I think. So Mothman's probably long gone because I just I just assumed that if the Mothman was still around that area and there was a statue of itself, like it, it would have, it would visit at some point, <laughs> yeah. especially with the light shining off of it. Yeah. <laughs> you would think so. But. Well, the most realistic encounter a person had, I forgot her name, but sh- sh- her and her brother, maybe, or somebody, they was in a car. And they was driving, and he, the moth 
man was standing in the middle of the road, and they slid to a stop. And the mothman got on the hood of the car and looked in the windshield at him. Hmm. Didn't harm him. Just looked at him. You'd have given him the bird, wouldn't you? <laughs> Let me tell you something, boy. <laughs> I'd have tore that whole car apart <laughs> and hopped two way on out of there. <laughs> I'll be gone. But that's that's the most realistic encounter that I've seen when I was doing my research. Well, I, I think that's because um, that 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 lady is still alive, and I think she was a teenager at the time. Yeah, and her story has never changed. Yeah. So I mean, she's kept the same story, you know. And it's let's get down to brass tacks here. <laughs> here we go. Do you think <clears throat> this is true? You think there was a Mothman? Do I think there was a Mothman? Yeah. I I think some people saw something. Skeptic, yeah. huh? Skeptic. No, I'm with well, I'm, I'm with Scott. The question. And just like Robert Howell with the lizard man was telling us last week, I believe something happened. I don't believe it was, you know, the lizard man that we uh, have in our minds. I don't believe, like yeah. exactly like he said, that it was a scaly lizard man that came out of the of the swamp. So in this case, no. I, I really, I mean, that's just a little bit. There's just something not quite right to me, and that's I don't know. I you know you don't know, and that's that's what makes cryptids cryptids. That cryptids are yeah. there because they're yeah. they're things that that you that everybody talks about. They're folklore. You don't have necessarily have definitive proof that it's real, like Bigfoot, you know, your Sasquatch, your Yetis, those, you, uh, Loch Ness monster. You don't have just real proof. Just because I take a walk in the woods, sometimes people just make a big deal out of it. They just, <laughs> 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 yeah. no, no, but, they saw you. No, but but so that's, like, that's what's like hard Trey to say. Saying I, is, I, I get what he's saying. You know, it, it's it, even with the Mothman. Um, the one thing you have people talking about the Mothman is that. Every eyewitness who saw it all reported the same thing. Yeah. You know, they, they said it was um, some seven tall figure with a, had 50 wings. Foot. No, some, no, no. I've heard no, some say 50 foot no, wings. No, no, yeah, no, no, 48. Had, yeah. Yeah, 48. Yeah. It had a, a wingspan of, of 10, 12 feet. Or, right. You know, so it was, it was, it was all obviously big, but. And I think everybody who in that area has described it has pretty much stayed the you same. You think it kind of snowballed and people I, started, their mind I, started I, messing with them? I, I think, I think, like this, people I think that's what have. it was. Let, you, you think so? Can, I'm going to add something to this. So we talk about what we believe and don't believe. Something that did apparently, uh, apparently, because we don't have the, the proof of it that, that this happened, but when the, uh, the first Mothman sightings, um, happened um all the witnesses say that they were all visited by men in black I okay well yeah, That's right. yeah now listen so one there was uh i think she was local this reporter mary high mary uh higher is that yeah mary higher so, so she's a reporter a journalist she's investigating this stuff just like she does anything that happens in the town she's just she's the, their local reporter so she's investigating the story she gets involved with another guy who's a UFO um, enthusiast. En enthusiast. There you go. Um, so <clears throat> I got his. I actually have his name down too, and I forget John Kale. So I got all this stuff. She partnered with a UFO researcher named John Kale. They get together. They start putting notes together. They start going around uh, doing their research, talking to, interviewing all the people that that have said that they saw something. Well, now, and they also say that they've been visited by men in black. Well, now she gets visited by a man in black. And they all describe the men in black as the same. They're, they're just very stoic, no facial expressions whatsoever. They're wax figures of a person knocking on the door, standing straight up. And, and tell them. And to she, then she's, not, not. her story is that the, the man in black that visited her at her house said, Stop investigating this. Stop writing about it. You have no business talking about this. There's nothing to talk about. But you need basically you need to stop, and I guess scared her enough to stop talking about it because you really don't see a whole lot of stories about the Mothman until it turned up again in in 2019 in Chicago. I, so I read, you know, I forgot to mention about that. Yeah, I was telling my side of the story, but yeah, the, 
That's crazy. So they really was a man in black? Well, well, but but back then, I don't think they were referred to as the men in black. I think that came later with the that, movies that and came, stuff. Yeah. But but the, then it was federal just federal agents. It was well, a guy. Ca- well, it was, <laughs> they, they never were. They they never said who they were. Right. And they just had, showed up and said, "You imagine some imagine somebody coming to your house, right? Dressed up. They don't introduce themselves. They don't say black, anything. Yeah, black suit and tie. They don't sun, ask who sunglasses. you are. They don't ask who you are. They just they you open the door. Can I help you? And they just say, "You're going to stop talking about what you've been talking about." And basically just keep it as simple as that. And they don't have to give you details. But when they leave, you get Are they freaked riding out. bicycles or going to college? You don't know how they leave. Bicycle. They just <laughs> they disappear. <laughs> they I got just questions. Dis- <laughs> but but, 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 saying, how I act. <laughs> but no, no, but I, I think um, the men in black supposedly they were around for a couple weeks, yeah. you know, and just patrolling the neighborhood. Nobody knew who they were. When people would try and go up and talk to them. They wouldn't say anything. They, they they would just they would go to people who were talking about the story and say witnesses. Stop. Yeah, and say stop. You know, don't talk to the media about this. Stop it. And not give a reason. They don't have to give a yeah. reason. Yeah. Well, and, think, and would not give who who they were. Was it before or after the Key Bridge incident where they shut? That, this was, this this before. Was before. Yeah. I'm talking about they, when they shut off the um, TNT mill, like totally shut it off because they was investigating it. And the reporter, I think it was the reporter, went up there trying to, and the the dude come out and said, I, "You was told to leave. Now you need to leave." Well, th- that happened. Um, that that was after the the men in the in the black suits who were called the men in black or whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> after that, they um, with the the Slender TNT, man. The, the TNT area that, that you're talking about is they called the National Guard out. Yeah, who came? Yeah, and they, they shut and down, basically locked down the whole area. Yeah, but I, I think that might have been because it was a it, it was a a military site that they they built, you know, ammunitions, and so it could have been radiation, all kind of stuff around the site, and so you don't oh, think yeah, like, just, you like don't, Spider-Man. You don't no, think Spider Man? You don't think they was just looking for the? And no, no, I, I think it was they were like. This, because you had so many people going to the area at the time with guns, wanting to try and find the Mothman. And and so I think they called the National Guard out, and they were like, close the area down. They were like, you know, this is the area we used to make certain weapons yeah, or whatever. Weapons or whatever. And the area, I think, was contaminated. or And so I, I think it was a... A safety issue, I think, where they brought the National Guard out and like, hmm. okay, we got to keep people out of this area just because. They was, then they was, it, it might not, might not be. They, they, they might, they might know who the Mothman is. I don't know, but um, to me, what makes sense is they came there because there were so many people flooding that area because they wanted to find the Mothman, you know. And so they called the National Guard out, and they sealed off the whole area, which only made it that much more, more believable. Popular. Yeah, but you, where people were like, oh, well, "There's definitely something going on now," because you know National Guard's here, and they won't let us in. You there. think about the time too. This is 1966. Things are a lot different then than they are now. Um, now you, everybody's you had, got a phone. You you couldn't. Yeah. It would be really hard to hide just about anything now, even though they still don't have. Sharp pictures of, of Bigfoot. Well, that's what I was about. That's, that's <laughs> what I was about. I'm going to piggyback on that because Come on. 1966, you don't have social media, anything like that. And the same people gave about the same description yeah. of, of whatever they saw. But, but and, did and, they talked to each other before they decided to put their stories out there. Yeah, but before same, they said, let's make this story up and we're all going to tell the same story. You got to throw that in the camera. Be, too. Because yeah. it, was all, it was all people from the same community. Usually. So I mean, you don't know if they. I'm, I'm not saying what what they experienced was, you know, factual. Yeah, factual or made up. But yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't know. Usually, people see something because they're hiding something else. Hmm. Hmm. A little getting a little deep on this uh, right there. Like like little, area 51. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. This is exactly what it is. 
So, 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 so the people, questions. So, so the, the people questions. who saw something, you think they're hiding something? No, I think they saw something, but I think they you put, think the government's I, I, hiding I, something. Well, hiding I, something. I just think whoever put something there for people to see, so that they want not be looking for whatever they were trying to hide. Uh, the, so it's the, kind the, of a slide of hand. The, the laws of yeah, laws so of distraction. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. that's exactly what it is. Yeah, Thank yeah. Because if you if you say you know if look at my right hand so you don't see what the left hand's doing. Is that is that kind of where you're going? That's, like let's let's put something out. Let's put a whether it's a guy in a suit. Let's put yeah. uh yeah. let's whatever, let's put something yeah. up on strings to make it fly. As long as they don't go down yeah, to yeah, where right. the TNT you, is. You the let let, land, yeah. let the our attention land. go this way, yeah. where it's not focusing on what. Right, right. I'll tell you what. Actually doing. We should start a GoFundMe so Chris can go look for them all. That's yeah. what I was about to say. It would have <laughs> worked for me because <laughs> I would have never went down that road. I would, I'd be a hermit. I wouldn't go outside. I wouldn't do. I wouldn't go grocery shopping. What, no, come on now. What, well, you know, it got. Um, that story got so bad that we're in um in, in the town that the schools and all they wouldn't let the kids That's go right. outside. Yeah, I, I saw that too. Oh, they, they kept them inside. No recess. recess. Yeah, no recess. Oh, they, yeah. they stopped recess mm. and they were like because I didn't know that. If, if, yeah, if this thing is actually a giant bird or whatever, it might swoop down, down and, and get one of the kids. And get one of the kids. So yeah. They stopped recess. Wow, I wonder like when. I didn't think about that, but I wish we had. But when we had Robert here last week talking about the Lizard Man, did they do Bishopville schools the same way? Did they? I, I don't know. Uh, did I they keep them? No, because remember he said we had a tree out there, you know. Well, we he told everybody Bigfoot or something was out there. But no, but I mean, was there, did the schools, because you had the sheriff involved with that. I mean, you had the police involved in that story that had to take it serious just in case. But what did they do with the schools? Now I don't I don't know how um, Bishopville schools are. I don't I don't and back then I don't know how many there were, how big the schools were, or what. But mm. I'm just curious because that makes because this is local to us, and that's why I bring that up. But you're talking about they closed schools just in case the Mothman actually I was real. I would have took precautions. You imagine your grandma. You said she was she'd tell you to get home I, before that lizard man gets she, you. Dude, you imagine, she would be so serious <laughs> too. Imagine she said or the Mothman. <laughs> and you know, grandma was a couple houses down from mine. So grandma Doris, when, when she said that, I'm like, okay, now you can take me home. I'm not walking. <laughs> no, ma'am. And now you're taking me home. You messed yourself up. <laughs> Put your moo moo on. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, and how I, I just how did Mothman make it all the way to Chicago? Well, well hell, he had traveling. He had he, what? He's got uh, sixty years to get there. <laughs> yeah, he had wings. I mean, apparently, <laughs> could fly. I, you know, I, until you told me, that, I didn't know that. That's and, and I, there was a Mothman in Chicago, but if there was one, there has to be another. There's a hatchling. There has to be parents. Maybe there's a cousin, you know, the old cousin you don't talk to or the uncle that shows <laughs> yeah, up for Christmas you don't like. And but, that could be all over the place. <laughs> uncle yeah. BS. So, yeah. So, 2019, <laughs> the accounts of a flying moth creature in Chicago. Um, the NPR inquiry was entitled uh, The Case of the Chicago Mothman. So, they they had what they considered the thing, same thing. Whether they were the same thing, who knows? I mean, we don't know. We're saying we don't know if the first one was real, but if it was, was it the same one that went up to Chicago? Well, Chicago. If you look at the Chicago map, I guess they're West not Virginia. that far. Yeah, it's not that far. Not really that far apart. West Virginia, especially got, not in sixty years or yeah. fifty-four years. Or that was on the so, River. So, so, my, so my man think, flew north to hibernate. He was or, 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 woman, or woman. Maybe he's in Canada right know. now. We, we don't know. Be. Up there with the Sasquatch, and the Yetis. Yeah. The mystery <laughs> continues. Yep. God Almighty, that's some <laughs> wicked stuff. I tell you, man, I, I, I'm going to be looking up the sky when I go home. Oh, no, don't look in the sky. Look straight in front of you for those two red glowing eyes in the street standing there, six foot up the, off the ground. He ain't going to stand a way. chance. I'm going to run that forward right up his, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he better not be standing there for long. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna be uh, what's that man say? You are a rooster, not a chicken or a chicken hawk. <laughs> Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> boy, I say boy. <laughs> oh, what a great show! 
Hopefully everybody had some knowledge out of that one. That was I, I've been waiting on the Mothman. Yep. Learn, learn a little bit about the Mothman. Yeah. I mean, you go look it up, man. It's interesting. Yeah. And I'm, I, I'm gonna I think, look up some more. I think I'm gonna go home and watch the movie Mothman Prophecies. You mean with Richard Gere? Do you want me to? You want me to follow you home to make sure that nobody messes <laughs> with you on Please, the way? Dude. And don't you mess with me, man. <laughs> oh. Dude, I, I uh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, I'm Chris Hicks, Trey Davis, Scott Barfield, Carol Ganey. This is Guillotines and Guitars. We'll see you next time. <laughs>